Hey, there we go. We're back. We're back. We got another match for you guys. We're going to be watching Shaggy versus Syndicate. Let's, uh, I guess, just hop right into the deck lists as a. Uh... Yeah. Starting out here, we got Syndicate with once again a Simpsons avatar there to represent him. Force of Nature, Inspired Zeal, Lined Pockets, and Reckless Flurry. Starting off with this Force of Nature deck, we see a very similar list to what we saw last round, where we got She Who Knows, Heat Wave, a single in Dragalarva, and Queen of the Night. The list might actually be identical. I'm not seeing anything that stands out as different. How about you? Yeah, I think it's the same. Um, maybe the one thing to touch on is no Elder Bear. Elder Bear. Uh, four provisions is kind of tempting with Koshchi. Um, going for the double Brookser instead. I've seen some people playing like one Brookser, one Elder Bear. Obviously, mm -hmm. Brooks is going to be a lot better when you're following the Thrive Curve, but there are some situations in this deck where an Elder Bear would go a long way to just uh, trigger your Koshchi. Obviously, you've got Noon Wraith as well as an option, but uh, Elder Bear just being better than better than the Noon Wraith because obviously you don't have the Death Wish. Death Wish can be a good thing for Noon Wraith if you're playing Haunt, but that's not relevant here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like Queen of the Night is the flavor of the month. And instantly, the thing that hits me is the fact that we've got Force of Nature and Flurry, which means no Nilfgaard. Which, yeah. Um, has caught me off guard a little bit, but really interesting to see that, actually. Yeah, you were saying last round how you expect everyone to have NR, Nilfgaard, and the Syndicate, but here, opting to play Force of Nature and Flurry instead. Uh, but yeah, as you're saying, Elderbear, not really a card that you want in round three, but neither is Bruxa, and Elderbear is substantially better with the Koshjays if you do end up in that spot with your mulligans. And Koshjay does end up in a spot where it's just stuck with some weird stuff in round three, pretty commonly. A lot of decks that try to push for shorter rounds are often thrown in that position. But uh, next up, we got this Inspired Zeal deck, a bit different than the previous ones, not going for Devotion, instead playing Megascope and Neuromancy. Still got the Cursed Scroll to smooth out the draws, but there should be a lot more consistency in this list, and even more ways to make Commandos than in the list we saw last round. Any thoughts on this uh, Megascope Commandos? Yeah, it's kind of the way I, I personally would prefer to play it, just because, like, it's more, it's going to be more consistent. Having said that, in a tournament setting, we've already seen, do you really need the Aneuromancy when you've got a uh, Curse Scroll? Maybe not, but you do get the couple, the two Megascopes, and uh, also you, you're going to get the Paler plus Heat Wave, which is going to maybe give you um, an edge in the mirror, being able to answer Defender Fall Test. What's interesting about this one is it's what I would like to sort of compare to a deck I've seen Red Rain using last season, where it's actually got Erland instead of a Siege. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a massive fan, I have to say. I think cutting the Siege... Um, Siege is obviously very bloody good with the Ballistas. Um, and then you already play Siege Ladders. Like, it kind of just makes sense to to try and uh, uh, fit the Siege in. But what Erlen's going to give you is just a bit more explosive power in your Commando round three. Um, so it, I guess you just don't need the Siege, as you say. Okay, I can go into round three. I'm going to win round one with Fall Test. I'm going to get loads of carryover with Megascopes. And then I'm just going to make round three as short as possible. I'm going to have this explosive round three with, with Erlen plus Commandos maybe in. Um, yeah, definitely interested to see this this non-devotion approach, how it works out. Yeah, one thing about the Neuromancy in this deck, too, is it doesn't force your second amphibious self to be a combo card. You're a little less weak to mm -hmm. things like Squirrel skewing you over, where sometimes you just don't have your Pavetta early, or you don't want to play your Pavetta early, because this deck makes so many commandos, and shuffling nine of those into your deck for round three is kind of a ticket to draw on some pretty bad hands. Yeah, Next up I've always liked a Neuromancy in commando yeah. decks, I have to say. Um no Sunset Wanderers either is the other thing that's quite interesting. And I suppose, uh, similar with Koshchi, this is very combo-heavy decks. In fact, uh, only one Sunset Wanderers in this whole lineup. So if we look at Line Pockets, again, no Sunset Wanderers instead deciding to go for the Devotion approach. So no Sunset Wanderers, no Heat Wave. But what do you get instead? Well, you get a Bloody Horson and a Philippa, which are pretty phenomenal cards. So you can certainly see the logic of, of going for this. Uh, still fits in the four poisons as well, um, and doesn't really look like you're missing out on too much. It's just a decision between uh, devotion or non-devotion, really, for this pocket stick, it looks like. Yep, still fits in all the stuff like Witchfinder, Professor, Freak Show, Tunnel Drill, all the usual suspects, but instead of Wanderers and uh, Heat Wave, you just get to play Horson and Philippa, which are two pretty comparably strong cards. Not quite as universal as Heat Wave is, but certainly more powerful in some situations. Definitely, yeah. Lastly here, we've got Reckless Flurry. Once again, discard package with Sunset Wanderers, a single greatsword. This time we got some Savage Bears in the four-piece slot. I don't know if we saw those in the previous round, but uh, 
Savage Bear to go along with Raging Bear and Spallblood Totem. I think we can just call this Beast SK, right? Yeah, basically at this point. We're just missing the, the Raging Bear, right? I've seen a few people playing Portal into Raging Bears recently. and uh, I even saw a Portal into a, a Raging Bear plus a Skirm yesterday, which was <laughs> which was a new one altogether. It seems um, suboptimal. <laughs> yeah. This one's got a GERD in at seven provisions. We saw, I think it was Poisan with a decoction at six provisions. Um, but managing to squeeze a GERD in, so going to be a little bit worse maybe into Koshi, but obviously better into decks that are going wide, like Commandos in round one, GERD could play for a lot of points. And I like the Savage Bear inclusion. Obviously, you're playing the Scalds. just gives you like an extra uh, discard target, and if you can discard one Savage Bear, the second one's going to play for eight points, which is nothing to laugh at for four provisions. Yep, and moving on to the next lineup, we got Shaggy, who has an actual face picture and is not just a Simpsons character. We got Reckless Flurry, Lined Pockets, Inspired Zeal, and Force of Nature. So he's got NR, SY, and uh, no Nilfgaard. Yeah, I'm surprised. Again, I, I didn't watch the qualifiers, so you can maybe fill me in as, as the sort of series goes on if this is something we saw more commonly last weekend. Um, I, can't, I can't believe I'm watching two people without Nilfgaard when I look at how good Tactical Decision is. Well, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm excited. Uh, Flurry and Force of Nature, clearly. Uh, Shaggy's got enough confidence in in those decks over over NG. And yeah, Flurry, very similar. There's not many things that change in this case. No GERD, but a second Greatsword. Um, and also just one Scald going for a Hunter and a couple of Gutting Slashes. And I'd say I'd really like to see the double Gutting Slash. Uh, you're not playing the Bombs uh, from the Maddox deck, but... Ultimately, this is a deck that feels like it does want some control cards, and there's not really many better four provision damage cards than Gutting Slash. You can do six six damage at once with this card, and when combined with leader charges, that can give you a lot of uh, removal. Very similar to the Decoction, but two provisions cheaper, in fact. Yeah, I also just really like trimming one of the Scalds in general. Playing double Scald, often you don't want to play both in a game. You end up like discarding one of them, or playing one for not enough value, but having... The extra gutting slash, you actually want to play in some matchups where it's called pretty much only when you have really bad hands in round one are you going to end up wanting to play both of them. Or like you have a coral that lives, but how often does that really happen? Uh, moving on. Yeah. Yep, moving I was on. Just gonna, I like the double greatsword as well. We saw yeah. uh, in the one game where a heat wave answered the greatsword and it also made the Hjalmar worse. If you play two greatswords, uh, there's a better chance that, that your first one might get heat wave, but then hopefully you get to mega scope. Um, the second great sword. So I like I like the double great sword. Even though you're not playing Maddock, might force you to to commit leader charges earlier on. But you're probably just going to try and mulligan, um, mulligan them round one if you if you find two, I guess. Mm hmm. So uh, next up we've got lined pockets again. Not going for devotion, but here we're also making room for a neuromancy in addition to sunset wanderers and Karathi heatwave. Not seeing anything like in the bronzes, but yep, just those three gold cards. Still got Drill, still got Freak Show, but we are cutting the Witchfinder from this list in order to make room for the powerful tutor. I think this is my favorite line pockets deck I've seen, actually. Um, I really like the decisions going Neuromancy over Bank. You're paying four more provisions, but I feel like a Neuromancy has always felt so good in these line pocket decks. The double Jackal as well. Just being able to go a Nero for the Jackal when you need it in round one. I find like line pockets can have a real issue at times otherwise, and I feel like it's got to be worth it. Um, going for Philippa as well. Uh, obviously, the Siggy's in there too. Siggy's just such a fantastic card. Sometimes you can have too many coins, but um, yeah, I really like the build. And just one bloody good friend is polarizing it, squeezing in those extra golds to play a Cleaver's Muscle, which is now four provisions. Okay, we, uh, we, just we, have that backup option off of Justice and three we, poisons as well with one trap to go double. This we do have game invites, so uh might want right. to... Let's do it. Hop on to that, but real quick, we've got Inspired Zeal with the uh, lots of Singleton Bronzes here. One Winch, one Bombardment, one Lyrian Cavalry, one Envoy, one Century and Knight. This has that option for the toolbox in both Metallic and Amphibious Assault. And lastly, we got Force of Nature with Unseen Elder and Auberon for a Devotion Monsters that unfortunately Jeez. I don't think we have time to really go over as we're hopping into game one already. Uh, yep, we got Shaggy against Syndicate, game number one, Inspired Zeal against that Devotion Force of Nature deck. Uh, I don't have the bands yet, let me see if I can find those. Syndicate, Syndicate. Cool, cool, yes. cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm so surprised to see a Devotion Koshi deck, that is not something I've ever seen before uh, yeah. in, in, a competitive, in a competitive setting, but, I mean, obviously Oberon being able to trigger Koshi twice uh, certainly 
quite uh, quite exciting. And Unseen Elder's no joke for a devotion payoff. One thing you're going to miss out on, of course, is a Neuromancy. Um, but you do have now and Maxi as well. Maxi's going to be really nice to uh, give you the best chance of getting Koshi in hand. But Nalgafar does offer you like an extra way if you play Nalgafar in round two. If you still don't have Koshi, you can just hope to obviously put it on top of your deck. Syndicate as well. Um, while Shaggy is certainly the favourite from from all the players in the tournament, I think Shaggy, Poisson being the two favourites. Syndicate, um, definitely a strong player that, that gets some good ladder performances quite consistently. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, Devotion Monster is commonly viewed as something that just doesn't have enough points for how little interaction that it has. We're, uh, we're seeing it here. Syndicate gonna lead on the commando and really exploit Shaggy's lack of interaction, speaking of. Yeah, obviously you don't get any locks either in, in this cost deck, but we've seen some people cutting Heat Wave. At that point, if you're cutting Heat Wave, is it really worth playing like an Aguara? And I think Shaggy's like you get Axie very, too. very brave with his deck building, and I love to see it. Maybe it, maybe it proves not to be great for him, but I can certainly see the logic behind it and uh, excited to see it in action. For sure. But usually when you're cutting the Heat Wave, you're adding in the Axie, just so you still have that tall removal thing against like Sunset Wanderers and stuff. But uh, yeah, whether Axie and Aguara and... Not even always Duragare are worth not playing Unseen Elder and better four provision cards is definitely an interesting question. So you see I've Shaggy. actually seen like some people cutting the even the Axie now uh, for Sunset really? Wanderers to just yeah just saying okay I just don't care I'm just gonna play more points in you if I win round one as well like if you get that Sunset Wanderers just increasing your round one potential it can um obviously just improve your chances to win the game a lot of the time of cost you if you draw the cards but um. Yeah, and obviously Syndicate, as you say, exploiting this lack of control. There, there are no locks, there are no heat wave for Shaggy, and therefore Fold Test is going to be an absolute menace to deal with. Yep, but uh, Shaggy just going to keep building up his board a little bit, triggers that Thrive, consumes the Arcuspore, thins out a card, but uh, I can't imagine he's going to be too competitive into this round against the Fold Test. Wonder if he's even gonna try. Yeah, just gonna pass here. Give it up to the commandos. How many is that in deck? <laughs> Don't look. Don't look. It's a slaughter. Yeah, okay, good idea. Good idea. <laughs> okay, thank you. Jeez. Yeah, and this is what Foltest does. Not many cards like Foltest in the fact that he's playing in round one as a threat, and then he's also a carryover. And I think what makes it even more devastating in these decks is your option not to click the yeah. commandos so it gives you the commandos as carryover for round two and then also carry over for round three with pavetta um and this is where erland is really coming on into his own as well for syndicate you haven't clicked the fault test you have an abundance of commandos in deck 17 card deck which is more than you start the game with of course you start the game with 15 cards in your deck so this erland really is um, playing for as many points as you could really imagine. Yeah, 15 of those cards in deck are units, only two specials. We get a 19 point Erland if he clicks it, but I don't think he's gonna be clicking it. At least not early. Probably yeah, you've also the... got the option to just save the Erland for round three as well, after you put yeah. better, putting all the commandos back, each one gonna get boosted up. So a few things uh, as options. And Syndicate opening with a Mauler, Shaggy starting with a Lava, of course. Uh, only has one Lava in hand, the Brooks up being a nice um, next pay for him with the Thrive Curve. Does at least have the Cave Troll, which isn't the easiest thing to deal with. Uh, Heat Wave going to be an option for Syndicate as well as uh, Selkirk. Does in fact have a Pella, um, but now he's gone a Neuromancy for Vernon Roach. Not going to be an option, so the Defender could actually be pretty good for Shaggy if he does use it this round before the Pella is, is drawn by Syndicate. That's a lot of points! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, with the damage crone available on 4, it doesn't want to float this commando. Is going to use a leader charge there to be a little bit safer, but 38 to 6. Brutal point scap. And then it's just going to be even more commandos. Still has the megascope, still has the blue stripe scout. Going to be Pavetta in round 3 for a full row. And this is probably the reason you don't see much devotion monsters on the ladder it just doesn't have the tools to deal with what you need on an average day while it might have more favorable matchups and it probably you could argue has more points the control tools that you get from from the non-devotion is really the reason that that is the standard way of playing at the heat wave the locks um 
Of course, Morvid used to be a, a, a lock for monsters back in the day, but similar to Northern Realms uh, and Purify, you don't get access to a lock in Devotion Monsters. So cool. Yeah, this is just... Uh, this is rough. This is... Not where you want to be if you're a Devotion Monster. Syndicate taking the pass into an 8-card round 3, though. Hmm. Well, if it's not going to go all the way, maybe... Yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, commandos, uh, you can just go for the, the shortest round three possible, but you also know that Koshi has a really, really good short round, and both of you might have overswimming issues, so I can certainly see the logic yeah. of the pass, maybe just trying to get card advantage. does look like that has, has worked, and for Shaggy, let's not forget there is no maxi, uh, so drawing this Koshi is going to be paramount for Shaggy, otherwise I think he's going to be in a bit of a sticky situation. Yeah, Defender plus Elder, just... Syndicate didn't want to deal with the engine, decides to take his card advantage going into round 3. And I mean, I mean, card advantage with a bunch of commandos that get boosted by Erland is nothing to scoff at. This is... Ugh. Let's see what Shaggy can assemble for round 3. No Corinthia or Kashe in hand yet. Gonna be trusting the top of his deck, but just Bronza so far. There's the third Crone. Kicks the Andrega Ratcatcher. He's not going to have it. He can't draw both Corinthian and Koshche. But uh, looking at the other side of the table, that's a lot of golds. Selkirk, Erland, Pavetta, AA, and Neuromancy. What's missing? Defender? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Missing Defender. Definitely useful. Wow. Shaggy, I don't think, could have drawn worse. Um, this is a prime example of where Maxi would be just unbelievable value for for five provisions of course she's not always going to be but in these situations so he, he, he didn't see five cards in his deck as he took three mulligans and five of those cards include nalgafar she who knows karanthic Koshki. so and i think lava was the other one i think his bottom five cards were lava karanthic Koshki, nalgafar she who knows so really unfortunate for shaggy here um i don't think he was ever going to have a chance in this game with those five cards stuck at the bottom of his deck yeah, this is uh, this is what they call a beating. He's gonna play it out. He still has Auberon. Does hit the Conqueror. Goes up to 19 points. Not quite enough for Sabbath next turn, but can leader I guess to get Sabbath next turn. It's not like he's got Kostjes anyway. <laughs> oh no. There's the Pavetta. All the commandos going back into the deck. 19 cards in round 3 in the deck. 19 cards. All of them getting boosted by Erland. Every single sure, one of them is a unit. I'm sure you can see why the, the Mill into Northern Realms matchup is rather doomed for Mill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeez. man. Yeah. And let's be fair as well. Okay, Shaggy, it hasn't worked out for him going down the, the devotion route in this case. But if he draws all his cards, you could argue he would have more points. Okay, look, Faltes, you're going to want the Heat Wave, you're going to want the lock. But he knows this. He might just be saying that the matchup is bad regardless, uh, which I'm kind of inclined to believe that it, it, it isn't a great matchup either way. You need to draw the Purify, you need to draw the Heat Wave, all these sorts of things. Um, and you're still not guaranteed the win. So. We've seen Northern Realms already in the earlier series get through twice at the first time of asking. Um, so for Shaggy, not the end of the world. He, he can bounce back. This is probably the deck he fears the most, particularly with his Devotion deck. And um, he, he can bounce back for sure. He, he's drawn incredibly badly. Syndicat looks like he's down by a ton of points, but we know that there's a lot of commandos waiting to, to hit the board. Is he and, even uh, down? This Erlen gets clicked for the point gap. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. <laughs> I did not. Oh man. Shaggy will be chuckling to himself though. He's got a strong mindset. He's oh, yeah. not going to be too bothered by this first game. Yeah, there it goes. The emote. <laughs> not the He's best leader model for emotes. <laughs> but it probably does sum up his uh his his feelings after the draws here. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure I've ever seen someone draw quite as badly as that actually. That that it was impressive. Quite incredible. 80 to 51 that still has that aneuromancy left over. What a beating. What a beating. 
Oh, we move on to the next one. Northern Realms getting through for Syndicate. Um, we're going to be seeing this, this Devotion Koshi deck again from Shaggy uh, within this matchup, hopefully. 1-0 up for Syndicate. Um, yep. He has still got his, uh, his Force of Nature of his own and Reckless Flurry. Um, and Shaggy, as well as his Force of Nature, he still has his Inspired Zeal and his Reckless Flurry. So uh, all still to play for in this one. Syndicate taking it 1-0. Shaggy, the favourite overall for for the for day two of the invitational hurt but definitely a bit of a banana skin in syndicate who uh especially with this start if he can win this next one is going to be feeling pretty confident who are up in the series so a big game coming up here shag is a bit of a monster in these uh these conquest tournaments i feel like in every qualifier he makes the top four oftentimes doesn't make it past the top four but in every qualifier he makes the top four it is crazy how consistent he is was he in the top four this weekend? Is he already qualified? I think he qualified already. Yeah, yeah, I think he could be right. Yeah, his performances this year have been pretty phenomenal. I remember at the start of the year him sort of saying that he was going to go for it and he had a bit of a hard time, I think, with, with the first open qualifiers, like getting to the, the semis each time, but then he, he did eventually make it and he's just been so consistent. Really commendable. This matchup looks quite similar, but a key difference. Shaggy, he's playing Devotion mm -hmm. for his... Northern Realms, which of course we didn't see uh, for, for Syndicate. He was playing non-devotion, and Syndicate he he's playing uh, he's playing non-devotion for his Koshi. So sort of a, a bit of a reverse. Yeah. Um, you would expect Syndicate feeling a little bit more confident, having a lock, having a heat wave uh, in his deck in this one. It's also not commandos, which I'm sure makes a huge difference. Yes. Yeah, Quite a few. True. It's not as must answer anything in this matchup as something like full test in round one. Yeah, it's a very different. Northern Realms list, despite being the same lead up, it is going uh, the devotion route to greed the points with things like Gerhart, um, the Varaxis as well. And yeah, just dual Northern Realms with Siege. It's, it is a very, very different deck. Very control heavy uh, with the Bannard student as well, offering a lot of carryover with Shani and the Leader Charge. There's so many ways to answer Koshi with this deck, with the Iron Sace. Siege, often not. The, the best with the bombardment hitting armor, but combining the ballistas with the jewels, I, I can just see this being a very tough matchup for the Koshi player. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Historically, Duel NR being more of a shield wall deck, but the extra point that was recent, somewhat recently given to Inspired Zeal, just pushing Inspired Zeal over the top, and you pretty much don't see shield wall anywhere anymore. It's inspired Zeal for duels, Inspired Zeal for commandos between being able to give zeal to the shiny res to get those like five damage bannered students immediately back from the graveyard without giving your opponent the window to interact or just giving this couple extra points for like a zeal salt kirk and not have to worry about your opponent heat waving it just a lot of utility in being able to give zeal and oftentimes you're not really going to be dueling anything much bigger than seven or eight anyway so shield wall not even that important here yeah, worst comes to worst, you can also just use it on a formation card. It just allows you to play mm -hmm. a formation card in the back row. You could boost it up to keep it protected as well. Things like Ballistas and Varaxis. Bloody Baron as well can be an option uh, for, for that final leader charge. So definitely makes a lot of sense as the leader card of choice. And, uh, as the leader of choice. Definitely looking forward to seeing Gerhardt in action as well. Card, uh, probably my favorite Northern Realms card from, from the expansion that we've seen so far. Yep, here is the she who knows. A bit speculative here. I don't think we're going to be seeing this one live, but Syndicate's got to run it out at some point. No rush to answer it as without Sabbath, the she who knows does not carry over. So, not going to do anything crazy like run out of Onsace immediately. Does have Sabbath now, though. We'll see what Shaggy decides to do. He does have access to a boiling oil should he choose to uh, go for it. He can go assault into John the Talus for an oil. That would be one option, of course, with the double ballista down. That's going to re get that resupply for a lot of targeted damage. Yeah, um, is an option. But of course, committing assault normally a card you want to hold on to. But I'm, I'm sure he also wants to try and hold on to this Iron Sace. Yep, we are going to see the Natalis here, probably taking out the Witch Apprentice and then getting two more pings on the She Who Knows. As he did damage that down before playing his uh, Amphibious Assault. Gaggy does have a Winch in his deck as well, which is a card I really love to see. You can use it on Shani to reduce her cooldown. Um, there's no backup target, I don't think, in terms of cooldown. You can use it on a Ballista and it's not too bad. 
Uh, obviously, War Chariot and Fault Esprit being options, but Shaggy deciding they're not quite worth it. You often see people with Siege just really greeding out the, the Siege engines and just playing the cheapest ones possible. Um, he really doesn't have many Siege engines left, actually, in his deck, Shaggy. He just has a, a Reinforced Ballista, and that, I do believe, is it. Just one Reinforced Ballista left. Yep. It's not actually playing Siege, it's just dawned on me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. See, uh, Squirrel gonna come out and take down the Amphibious Assault. Not letting that echo as Hubert pops out of the deck for Shaggy, and another 4 provision card gets run out. She who knows, finally going down 16 to 36. We got a 20 point gap here in favor of Shaggy, and Syndicat has had enough. Yeah, this deck is really interesting from Shaggy. It's almost like a classic Northern Realms shield wall, but in 2021. Like the Devotion shield wall decks we saw for so long, uh, with Varaxis, with Selkirk, Einsays, Baron. It's sort of like that with a modern twist, with the Shani obviously being introduced and just really going for the Gerhardt, the daily, like these value uh, gold cards instead of the Siege, but still playing the Ballistas because of how good they are uh, when combined with the Warfare cards. Um, really, really interesting. Like it a lot, actually. Yep, Shaggy very confident in just going to this long round. Instant pass. As we see Syndicate with the Maxi trying to fix his draws, still missing that Kostje. Didn't get a glimpse of what the order he was, but he snapped that Maxi. He snapped it. So either he definitely missed it or definitely has it. Yeah. Heatwave on top. Queen of the Night next. There's Bruxa. Let's see. Quick mull on the Brooks that does find the costume. Pretty sure he kept it in that case. Yeah. Either that or Maxi is putting in a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> um, no Neeramant scene was drawn at all here, but um, uh, the damage crone Whispers also being missed alongside the cave troll. So far from a uh, far from perfect hand. The defender in particular, a card you are going to want access to against this dual Northern Realms because you're just going to force one of the jewels or the Bannard student onto the defender. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's looking like an uphill battle for Syndicate here. Yeah, With so all what the there's... jewels, the Bannard there's... student as well as dealing five damage from the graveyard. Yeah, rough. There's three potential duels and a Bannard student. There's two Kostjes to kill, a Witch Apprentice to kill, and I mean, I guess you can kill Rat Catchers if you want, but it looks like there's just an answer to everything in Syndicate's hand that has any type of scaling. But let's take yeah, and like, if you, if you look at the Siege, like, Siege itself, is Siege really what's that good? Like, Siege was never seeing much play until the Ballista change. Jagger just saying, I still want to play the Ballistas, but I'd rather just have, like, a Shani and a Dahlia, a, a, a Gerhar, all these high-end cards that have a lot of synergy together, yep. um, and just not bother with Siege at all, but still play the Ballistas. Uh, also, really cool to see the Cintra and Knight in the deck. One of my favorite cards. Doesn't see much play, but it is a seven point card if you can get the death blow for four provision. So a nice option to have off Amphibious Assault. Um, love to see this this boy in. One of my yeah, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for this card. It got buffed maybe four or five months ago as well. It got an extra point. It used to be two power for a very long time. Yeah, it plays really nice with all the pings too, all the reinforced ballista damage able to help you set that up to get your death blow. Yeah, and you're definitely rewarded in Northern Realms for playing one-off in your four provision bronze cards. You mentioned at the start in Shaggy's deck, lots of one-off cards, and when you have Amphibious Assault, having like these tech kind of cards that you can tutor uh, does does become a, make a lot more sense. You know, it's often people will play a Quedrini Knight to play uh, Assault into. Well, this this Knight plays for the exact same amount of points if you can get the Death Blow, but obviously damage often being a little bit better, so uh, yeah. not going as tall. Sounds really cool. It does come. Braxis getting taken here. You love to see it. Just knowing that there's no answer in the list. Gonna play it on the range throw to get value on every soldier that gets deployed throughout the round. And there's a good number of soldiers that are gonna get deployed throughout this round. I think. Wait. Are none of these cards actually soldiers? Knight's not uh, a soldier. The Royal Guard is and Baron, right? <laughs> it's just two, two, okay. <laughs> Better than nothing, right? Better than nothing, true. I just kind of assumed that Sintra Knight was a soldier. I thought Selkirk was a soldier, but I guess not. I also thought that he had the knight sold, uh, the, but yeah, I, I found this out actually the day. I think in a cast I made the same mistake uh, about a month ago or so. But yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How you look at Varaxis and you see Varaxis being a card that 
Uh, you only tend to play in these devotion decks, but he often doesn't really get that much extra value in the devotion deck. So maybe he's just being a bit underrated in the non-devotion. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting, and I would love to see the Gerhardt being, being uh, uh, a greedy Gerhardt, like the double invo of Gerhardt would be. <laughs> oh, super quite greedy! Something. Yeah, I respect. Gotta go that. for it. Yeah, I mean, what else are you doing with it? Maybe. This isn't really a Tremors matchup, so yeah, just let it go to nine. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. You can even like I'm trying to think if there's any other funny spell cards. You can go for like double uh su triangle within a triangle or something like that for Shaggy. He's a bit of a showman. But for the moment, just protecting Ashani. There's four damage uh, as the threat from Syndicate with the uh with Whisper. Sorry, six damage. Six damage is the threat. That's why he's taking the raw guard to protect the Shani here. And just make sure she's out of that range, because um, at six cooldown she, I believe, is going to go off one more time. I always find cooldown and Shani like quite difficult to work out when she's exactly going off or not. Uh, yeah, um, same. I don't know why, but like cooldowns always feel really unintuitive to me. Right, so she is going to go off. She's at five with six cards remaining. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Queen of the night. Come on, play the Gerhardt Shaggy. I want to <laughs> see the invo. <laughs> Is it even going to be better than just casting contests on Banner students? Probably not. Yes, oh, I'm just coming is. down, though. This is what we want to see. Oh, That's what yeah. we're here for. You could even take one invo, one triangle within a triangle. So there's all sorts you could do with the Gerhardt here. Uh, 31 to 32. Points are close, but there's answers for everything that Syndicat wants to do. And those answers trade pretty well. There's the first Kostya coming down. But uh, Shaggy's got... All the answers. Just gonna click the Bannered student, and we are gonna use the Gerhard a little bit early for casting contest. He can he can switch it back on with Varaxus. Do yep. it, Shaggy. Come on. I think he might Come just on, want another casting contest. We want the patience. <laughs> he's thinking about it. I think he's mousing over it. I think he's just making sure. Do I ever lose if I do this? And he decides no. So I'm gonna do it because it's fun. Good man. Uh, maybe he just uses the Bannered Student again and uses another casting contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight eight damage on this is no joke. And I think this is also when you compare the Bannered Student to the Aratusa Student that's just been revealed. It's going to be a similar card, but it's uh, boosting instead. You can really see why the Bannered Student is just a strictly better version of that card. The damage being much more relevant carryover um, and, and having a lot more... Uh, impact on on these round threes uh, as a res target from shani and of course you can only pick one to res of shani as well because one's yeah. melee locked one's range lo row locked and you have to put shani in, in the in the melee row if you want to get the battle student order i agree so, that it's better but i don't know if i would go as far as to say that it's strictly better i think there are going to be plenty of rounds <laughs> where you're going to have too much damage and just having that extra boost effect yeah. that you can res or that you can play to just put points on your side of the board ends up mattering mm -hmm. but yeah certainly yeah, this game that's not what that's not what this game's about at all <laughs> Yeah, there's also like some some other things you could maybe do with it, where like you boost up your dual card and stuff like that. But it definitely does seem like there's going to be less situations that the res is going to be on the uh, the boosty lady. Like I think you probably in round one would, in most matchups, prioritize the the ban on student as well, try and get that down first for the patience. But it's definitely still a card that I think is going to support patience decks. But anyway, Syndicate slamming the. Woodland Spirit, we've got a 16-point Ratcatcher S here. 16-point Ratcatcher S, 10-point order on the Bannered Student. Here's the Selkirk coming down. Gonna give that a charge, and I imagine we're just taking out the Kostya here. Yep, gonna hold on to the Student, let it keep getting Patience value. Up to 11. Here come the Gankanes. There is still the threat as well of the six point of damage from Wispus. So um, not an opportunity for Shaggy here to greed the Iron Sace in the back row because, of course, it would die to uh, the Crone. Of course, it's not the last card for Syndicate. He doesn't have access to it. So there were definitely a few things missed for Syndicate, mainly the Defender as well as the Wispus and also a Lava. Um, Shaggy, while he's down, this is what we've been waiting for, trying that. <laughs> this is the turn. All the orders are going to come together. We got a reset on to back as well. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> There's the triangle. Boosts up the Anses. <laughs> duels the rat catcheress. Resets. Oh god, it's a slaughter. It's a slaughter. 
That was enjoyable. I liked that. I I'm very glad we got to see the triangle within a triangle Einstein synergy there. Oh. That's something you see every day. So next season, this this uh, this Gerhard at nine is is going to have an extra card in the pool, right? So yeah. it's going to have uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Expecto Patronum spell from from Squirtle. The Squirtle thing. As well. you're probably not the thing you're going to be looking for most of the time. No. Uh, uh, my yeah. chat, my chat's been saying this card, the the Squirtle card, is just a nerf to Gerhardt, which I think is a little bit harsh. How often does Gerhardt actually tick to nine? Exactly, and you've always got Curse or Invo and and Triangle. There's always yeah, a good it's card. so redundant too. But uh, yeah, and our dispatching monsters in two games that didn't look close at all, despite being two mm. different variants of each deck. Yeah, and I have to say, I, it's interesting to see. The, the no fault test deck from Shaggy, mm -hmm. um, having confidence in just the power of inspired zeal, devotion, and you can see why. Like so many threats, you can see why he decided to kick Siege when he's playing cards like Baron, uh, Gerhardt, Varaxis. All these cards did really well. Adalia in round one as well, just having that Ballista with a shield uh, really did help him out. Really doubling down on those warfare cards when you've got a couple of a uh, couple of Ballistas in the same round, and uh, yeah. Both NR players getting their deck through. It's been the theme of the day. And we're left with Reckless Flurry and uh, Force of Nature from both players. This Devotion Force of Nature available for Shaggy. Here we go. Devotion <laughs> versus non-devotion. Let's oh, go. This is what we're here for. We just want to see some wholesome point slam. Oh my goodness. Shaggy has drawn his costume. Both what players. Him. They've both drawn their costumes. I believe Corinthia's still missing from both players, but it's not something you need in round one. There's plenty of time to still find it. Syndicat picking up his She Who Knows, as does Shaggy. Syndicat with the Heat Wave able to take out Shaggy's, though. And, uh, yeah. Let's strap in for some wholesome point slam action. Both players leading on their Andrega larvas, setting up their Thrive Curves. Syndicat's got the Bruxa as well. Yeah, Shaggy is going to have a hard time disrupting the Sabbath at all. And of course, doesn't have a lock or a heat wave to answer the She Who Knows. Mm -hmm. On the other side, however, uh, Syndicate does have that heat wave to answer the She Who Knows. Um, no defender available either for Shaggy, but both players just following the Thrive Curve with a Lava into a Bruxa to open things up. Yep, still a little short of being able to get Sabbath here. With the lamp click, he goes to 14, 15, 16, 17. Only 21 if he decides to play Witch Apprentice here, but you might still just see it come down here because it's safe on curve. Yep. There's the Apprentice. Not going to grow, but Shaggy's deck is incapable of dealing 4 damage, so it is safe. <laughs> Same, Shaggy similar idea for similar Shaggy. Ideas. Shaggy is doing what I do whenever I decide to play chess. I'm very bad at it, and I just much prefer going black, because what I do, I just copy my opponent. I played a game against Sabre, and I just copied him for like 25 turns. <laughs> so I did. Did I it work no out? What I'm doing. Um... It worked out alright. I still lost in the end, but I, I, I started off quite well. <laughs> he just realized what I was doing, though, so, uh, yeah. Yep, Shaggy yep. really is just... Just copying, uh, even making sure to match the placement as well, just to just to make sure Syndicate knows that he has no plans of, of anything different. And Shaggy here has the opportunity to continue. Uh, I'm expecting to see she who knows in between the rat, Catcheress, and the Brooks are here. But of course, the heat wave is a threat. So in, in fact, yeah. decides at this moment it's time to change things up. What he's going to li likely do with the she who knows is try and wait for Syndicate to pass, knowing heat wave is a threat. He's going to try and just have enough reach. Uh, so that he can just, if Syndicate ever passes, play the she who knows to take the round, um, and therefore she can't be answered. Yep. Looks like Syndicate just gonna play the Gan Kane here, making a 24 point gap. Not looking very easy. So we got first Crone, we got an Andrega Warrior that plays for 5, consuming the Kikimor worker. She who knows plays for 10 and 3 thrives. Yeah, I mean, I guess both players are sort of running out of things to do. Syndicate still has that Aniromancy that he can run out, probably. But, uh, Shaggy might start having some points issues. Looking at this hand. 
Yeah, the Indrega Warrior definitely not doing the most, and obviously made the decision not to go for the second Lava. So now it is also just another card in, in your hand that you don't want to play. Obviously, Koshchi is not an option. We already know that She Who Knows is going to be swiftly answered with a Heat Wave, and he wants to try and hold on to that. So far from ideal, does decide it's time to play the She Who Knows, and I think um, we can fully expect Syndicat to swiftly Heat Wave this. Heat Wave obviously could be used on Koshchi later on, but that is a rather slow play it's... if you do have to do that. You usually want to play your Heat Wave early in this deck. If you're Heat Waving your opponent's Koshje, you're taking away from one of your own Koshje turns to do so. Whereas if you take the Heat Wave now, you can just play on Curve and it's probably going to be better. I think, what, as I said earlier, I think a mistake a lot of people make with this deck is overvaluing their Heat Wave when they should just be willing yeah. to run it out a little bit more aggressively. Because it is a bad card later on. Yeah. Yeah, as you say, like, your Koshje you have to play towards the end of the round with the Adrenaline. So you want to be triggering that Koshi every single time that you can. And having a card like a Heat Wave as a finisher, it's the same thing when Uridan was like a very meta card a few seasons ago when people gave Koshi a try, they'd be playing Uridan, and it's kind of counterproductive because, you know, you only have a few turns to, to, to play your Koshi and you want to maximize it. And wow, what a hand here. Both players drawing their Karanthia. Uh, of course, the 11 carryover being the advantage. It's actually going to be more than 11 carryover because there is uh, a Relic in the Witch Apprentice, the mm. leader as well. So it's probably working out more like 13 or 14 carryover uh, for Syndicate advantage here. But we'll also have one less card in this round uh, if he does try and 2-0. <laughs> we again see the Witch Apprentice get run out. No, Shaggy can't deal 4 damage. Still, none of the Crones have come down. Larva going to be the lead here. But uh, yeah, this is if he wants to uh, Kostya this round, he can Kostya now. This would be the turn. And looks like he's going for it. Yeah, and I mean, if you think about Shaggy's deck, he's got the Devotion payoff, like these high-end cards like Oberon, Unseen Elder, compared to Syndicat that's got an Aniromancy. And the reason the Aniromancy is just so good... Uh-oh. we play to three rounds, you want to try and get that 2-0. So having a card like Aniromancy where you can just search for your best gold cards that are stuck, got a, a big difference to these Koshi decks, of course, if you draw it. And Shaggy is going to be a little bit sad that he's missed his Unseen Elder, his Oberon stuck in the deck. Um, but yeah. does have this extra card in round three. While well, he doesn't have the carrier, he this happening. Uh oh, especially he keeps. Hey, it's gonna play for a lot of points. Yeah, you keep hopping in and out there. I don't know if it's my computer or if it's no, on it's you. happening to me too. Okay, okay. Wasn't sure if it was just a Discord thing. <laughs> but uh, oh, is it? Was I hopping in and out of? Um... Yeah. Right. Do you know what it said? Connection lost. It's probably my internet hopping in and out. Okay, then. okay. Yeah. Didn't know whose end that was on, but just to make sure. But we do see the cost J's coming down for both players. Syndicat with the lock as he is not playing Devotion, able to take out one of those. So one cost J versus two. Usually you want to be the player with two cost J's going. Yes. As these witch apprentices continue to grow, a Neuromancy available can pull First crone? No. Kiki more worker is probably the most points. Bit weird, but I guess that's how it plays out. Leader getting committed for Shaggy. And uh, let's see if Syndicat just wants to all in here. I feel like it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, lead is still available as well. I think there's nothing he could really lose to at this point. And again, we're seeing the downsides of this Devotion deck from Shaggy. It's a brave pick, but so far, on evidence, you can see why the meta version is is, is taking the non-Devotion approach. But uh, Shaggy, he is going to be hopeful that he can still get this deck through against the Reckless Flurry of Syndicate. So Syndicate strikes back 2-1 to Syndicate. Shaggy, just a game away from taking defeat. Indeed, indeed. Syndicate's got Reckless Flurry to get through, while uh, Shaggy's still got to get a win in with both Reckless Flurry and this Devotion Force of Nature deck. The The risk of taking Devotion Force of Nature doesn't look like it's pegging off yet, but maybe we just haven't seen the matchup that it's for. Maybe, maybe this deck is really good into Reckless Flurry. I don't know if I see that, but... Yeah, makes for a I'm better story sure if it is, right? <laughs> I mean, if you're, it's got to be better than a heat wave. It's got to be better than a lock 
those cards aren't particularly doing much. Maybe that's the plan for Shaggy. Maybe the Reckless Flurry deck is the reason that he's brought the Devotion. Maybe that's why he's been queuing it every time, not wanting the Reckless Flurry deck to sneak through. Maybe. Um, he's just wanted to make sure he finds that matchup. And, well, he knows he can find it and he can choose the coin he'd prefer at this point. While he might be 2-1 down in the series, at least he can choose, you know, which coin each matchup is played on. And he decides he wants to play his Force of Nature uh, on, on the blue coin against Flurry here. So it's going to be a Flurry mirror if he wins this. And Shaggy will have second say, which is often an advantage in that in that mirror. So big game here. I think if Shaggy can win this one, he's probably going to be the favorite uh, going into the last match. It's definitely not going to be over. But um, Shaggy, third time of asking, can he get this Devotion <laughs> Koshi deck through? I want to believe in Devotion Koshi. I want to believe in the Wholesome Point Slam. Got an Indragalarva and a Bruxa in hand for the Thrive Curve. Also got Witch Apprentice. No consume for that Arcuspore, unfortunately. We are just going to see Larva and that Lamp clicked to try to not allow Syndicate to use some random damage to snipe those Larvas. Yeah, Shaggy does have access to the, those high-end golds, Unseen Elder Obron that he missed in the last game, but is at the moment missing the Koshchi. No Nalgafar either, that's going to be sort of the other way to try and get that card in hand. Um, the good news for Shaggy though is that uh, she who knows in round one cannot be Hjalmard most likely unless you're going to discard uh, a, a, like a great sword. Um, and there doesn't appear to be an answer in the hand for Syndicate, so we could see she who knows carry over uh, helping Shaggy out here. Yeah, not usually a matchup where that card gets to do anything, but we got a pretty awkward hand here where Shaggy's got a bunch of cards that really are either for round three or just points cards in these double megascopes. Cheeky more worker gonna come down here for Shaggy. Looking at the hand at 23 points that will enable the Witch Apprentice. Unfortunately, had to trigger his Thrive up to four, but Witch Apprentice not really a card that you want to play and not have it triggered the same turn. And we see another empty Bear Witcher, the second one today, coming mm -hmm. down for just five points. Yeah, not doing much, but one thing it does do is it puts a better target for Hjalmar in the graveyard if uh, Syndicate is 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 gonna end up being forced to pass, which certainly looks like that is going to be the case. So definitely makes sense to play the Bear Witcher for subpar value to just get that carryover on Kyama. The difference between um, four and eight removal could definitely be re very, very relevant when there's cards like Unseat, Elder knocking about. All eyes, I think, are going to be on the top decks of Shaggy in round two here. Yeah, but Shaggy's smelling a little bit of weakness and just jams a she who knows, knowing that Syndicate's probably looking for a pass. But, uh... Yeah, now Syndicate wants to pass. He's passing into 10 carryover. Megascope's available, but no way to answer this. Yeah, here's the Megascope. Just gonna trade off some of those. Let Shaggy play some more stuff. Witch Apprentice available, pretty easy to run out. Card can be pretty awkward to get Sabbath later on, as the uh, Skellige deck tends to answer your board quite a bit. So just getting 25 points in play can be a struggle, as Syndicate does finally take that pass. 23-43, she who knows, carrying over 10 points into round two. Here we go, trying that. All eyes on the draws. If we find, if Shaggy finds Karanthia Koshchi, his hand is going to be quite incredible. And there Koshchi. is the Koshchi. What a start. Of course, you have to have this card in hand if you want to Karanthia it. So that's the most important card to find. Now Gafar and Karanthia both remain in the deck for his two mulligans here. Yep. Is gonna kick his thinning, so. Yep, just gonna kick the consume package. Doesn't find the current there yet, but there's still time, there's still time. Yeah, no current there means he's most likely not gonna be going for the 2 0, and it's just gonna try and hold on to that Koshi. Of course, Heat Wave now available for Syndicate. Yalmar's dealing 8 damage on Bear Witches. Junod in hand as well. I mean, the hand for Syndicate is very good, so if you're Shaggy, you can make some efficient trades and go into a short round three where you top deck your Karantha, you've got your Koshian leader. Uh, could be very, very difficult to deal with, particularly with Oberon triggering Koshi twice, potentially. Yeah, Shaggy's got some options to run out here. He's just going to lead on the Kikimor worker. Going to be trying to get Sabbath before deploying the Witch Apprentice or the Rat Catcheress, as Rat Catcheress without Sabbath is pretty awkward against a leader that can just throw three pings around. Don't really want that leader activating for six. 
feels pretty bad. There we go, Syndicat. Plays the Birna, skillfully finds a Skirmisher to complete the two discards. Morkvarg and Skirm available to get kicked here. That is what we see. Yeah, it's not bad at all, is it? 15 points and two thinning off Burner Brand there. Showing why the discard package is such a popular approach to building decks with Skellige, particularly with cards like Sunset Wanderers also just getting extra points from uh, you drawing cards of Burner because it's just going to have to travel that little bit further. Yep, and here's that Bear Witcher in Graveyard paying off, allowing Syndicat to Hjalmar down this Unseen Elder before it starts running away with even more value. Makes him not forced to Heat Wave that, still leaves the Heat Wave open for the She Who Knows. Potentially, like, Leader Charge plus Jonad could also answer that She Who Knows. We do see the Rat Catcher has come down at 26 points in play, though. This could get a little precarious. Yeah. A little bit, all it needs is a little bit of damage, and then the Leader Charges can really start to to go to work, of course, Sabbath at 25 points. So Syndicate could decide to just go for uh, like a leader charge and just hope the third and final one hits the Rat Catcher S. Maybe an interesting decision, obviously, with Junod in hand as well. Just the Heat Wave to begin, to make sure that uh, that Heat Wave isn't wasting any points and uh, leader charges are being wasted onto the She Who Knows. And yeah, for Shaggy, He's in a really interesting spot. He's making some pretty good trades. Cards like Heatwave, cards like Hyalma, which are often uh, some of the best answers to, to Koshchi, being used instead on his things like his She Who Knows, like his Unseen Elder. And that's what he's really trying to do with this Devotion deck, just overload the, these kinds of removal cards and therefore uh, just have more value off of this Koshchi. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now he's got to decide, does he want to commit the Crones... Or does he maybe just want to take this pass, knowing that Sunset Wanderers is coming out soon and he'll risk losing his card? Syndicat did give Shaggy the pass. He could have used leader charges and tried to get ahead by damaging the Rat Catcherist down and triggering its unsabbathed ability for some extra damage, but chose not to. And uh, yeah, Wanderer is going to pop out this turn. Here's the leader charges, gets two extra oh, points. Oh my goodness, there it is. Brutal, brutal. And up ten. Except Axie for his troubles, too. 29-220. Yeah. Axie, honestly, a pretty good card, I think, to draw here. It's maybe not doing too much in round three, but you can use it on your own card here as your Burner Brand's been damaged down by four points, so you can still play the Axie for nine. Uh, I think most of the other cards are maybe going to play for more points in round three. So mm -hmm. even though it's a gold card at 10 provisions, you're probably not too unhappy to see the top deck of that. Does in fact decide to go for the totem instead. Probably a sensible option because, of course, totem um, does have an order. So you're going to get a few more points from it if you play it a little bit earlier. And for Shaggy, decision time. This is his best crone. Um, well, in fact, he, he has the Bruce in in the deck still, so crone might not really be getting any better. Obviously, being able to answer one of the fanatics, I would imagine that he holds on to the Oberon. He's basically saying, "Is this crone better?" Then the next card my opponent's going to play, and he decides probably it is. I'd rather have the crone than trading it. Down a card, will he find the Karanthir, though? That's going to be all important. If he finds the Karanthir, it's going to be an exciting finish. Indeed, indeed. Junad's going to be careful of taking out one of the Kostjes, but I don't think there's a second answer available. There's the Karanthir first card off the top! Finds Nagelfar as well. Too. He's gonna have defend. Ooh, okay. Defender can get Axied, I guess. Yep, that's true. Axie hmm. is gonna answer that defender, and yeah, it's like the perfect hand here for Shaggy. In the first two games, in the first one he missed the Koshi, the second he missed the Oberon Elder. Finally, the cards have been drawn, and arguably in the most important matchup. Okay, there's an Axie for defender, but your defender's trading up two points on that Axie. Um, and yeah, obviously Hjalmar, Heatwave having been committed already as well. Yep, Megascope going away, picks up a Bear Witcher, so his Quen is bricked. Hmm. Wow. That's unfortunate. Wow. Well, here's the Herentrook. Gonna be getting the Quartermaster for some proactivity. Yeah, and I think, honestly, this deck from Shaggy, 
looking at the way this matchup has played out, it, it's got to be uh, the reasoning behind it. It's got to be just expecting lots of flurry players and just thinking this Koshi deck is 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 well suited to this matchup. Yeah, um, possibly. Really, really cool to see. I, I very much doubt this is a deck that he would play on ladder. For, for the exact reason we saw in its earlier games, it did really struggle with Fall Test um, and, and that lack of control. But in this matchup, ditching the Heat Wave, ditching the Lock seems to be paying off. And Oberon with Koshki is just quite impressive if, if your Koshki sticks. Yep, there's the current Theer. There's Koshki number one. Is going to use a leader. Boosts it up to six. Well, six effective health. Junod can still take care of it, though. Mm, looks like it's not what he's going for. Just gonna play the Gur and try to fill the row, maybe? And then try to use leader charges to take out the bigger costume? Yeah, often you do see that Junod just reserved for the costume, but the adrenaline with Gerd clashing a little bit with the Junod play. Um, Far From Ideal does find the leader charge though onto the second Koshchi, so Junod gonna be an option there. Yep, it does get rid of one of those, but uh, yeah, I mean, just looking at the, the quality Ooh. disparity here, gross! Just Jeez. gross. <laughs> and there we go, the Oberon triggering the Koshchi twice, triggering all those thrives, and that is a forfeit. Not, not, not showing the bricked Quen to Shaggy. And we go to game number five. It's going to be Flurry on Flurry as the finishing, the siding matchup in this series. Not triggering all the Thrives. There is the Concede before the last couple could Thrive. But, uh... <laughs> threatening to trigger all the Thrives for sure. But yeah, Devotion Force of Nature getting through and we just got a Flurry Mirror. Going all the way to game five. All right, sign me up. So uh, just taking a quick look at the two Flurry decks, the big difference is uh, Syndicat, who we just saw with his Flurry deck, does have the Gerd uh, and a single Gutting Slash. Uh, one Great Sword as well, whereas Shaggy has the double Great Sword, no Gerd, and has got a couple of Gutting Slashes. There's also Savage Bears for Syndicat, no Savage Bears for Shaggy. So while these decks are very similar, there's a few... Subtle differences here and there. The main difference being double great sword for Shaggy uh, and a Gerd for Syndicat. So, yeah, if I was uh, having to play one of these decks, I'd probably prefer to be the player with the double great sword. But um, Gerd also can definitely play for quite a lot of points, especially against the discard package cards, which sort of tend to stack the front row a little bit. Yeah, definitely true. I wonder if we're going to see any. Weird looking sequencing under the discard package, trying to minimize Gerd value. Not something. Yeah, often you... these mirrors, like when, with the uh, previous versions that were playing Portal, Maddock, and things like that, there was a real advantage to be the player that goes uh, second in the matchup because if you're on blue coin, you don't have a lot of proactivity. It's normally on ladder as well. This is a deck that performs a lot better on red coin. So the blue coin player lacks some proactivity. You really don't want to overcommit in round one, but you also don't want to lose on even. So you've got to find that balance between not overcommitting and not losing on even, which often is, is quite difficult. So Shaggy was able to choose the matchup uh, on this coin. Um, because Syndicate obviously just had one deck to choose, but Shaggy won on blue coin with his monsters, which means he's now on red coin with his flurry in the mirror. Indeed. Let's... Uh... They're just taking their mulligans pretty quick. Is that so? There's one scald for the discard package for Syndicat, and one scald as well for Shaggy. Neither player with too many discard targets either. Both with uh, either a skirmisher or a Markvarg available. Both players. Just this is a big them. difference as well. This this bear play. Like this is not something you had access to. Um, sort of a month ago or so, it got buffed mm -hmm. quite recently. Just having like a, a proactive eight point play. Something this deck really does enjoy having. And both players opening up with a Raging Bear. Yeah, just being able to establish a Megascope target like this without like running out of Greatsword on an empty board is really convenient. Here we see... And we see the Savage Bear value as well with the discard package. Obviously the Scald in hand for Syndicate um, doesn't have a natural target until the Savage Bear was drawn. So 
A little bit of carryover potentially there. And there we do see, as you mentioned, the Megascope just coming in on the Raging Bear for eight points for four provisions. Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good indeed, as we're seeing Maxi come down. Let's take a look at this order. We got a Bear Witcher naturally on the bottom. That's a pretty good start. Coral More coming up. More near the bottom totem. is a bit, bit of a stinker, though. That is just a card you're going to want to cycle through for those extra five points. Yeah, true. Whenever you look at the bottom row of the deck and you see that there's four golds, you gotta got to consider whether you want to take that shuffle, especially. Yeah. This is like an example of where a maxi in round two would be better, right? You would draw your Coral, you draw your Totem, your Heat Wave, and then you'd be able to shuffle your deck, hopefully putting a lot of those bron uh, golds near the bottom, close to the top. Uh, yeah. Whereas with this maxi, what's likely to happen when you shuffle is some of the cards near the bottom will go to the top, but also some of the cards like Totem, Heat Wave, you would have had access to are likely to sort of end up near the bottom. Uh, yeah. There's no really real way of telling. Mathematically, when... that's just a wash, right? Like the middle row yeah. could just be the top row and then you're punished for maxiing in rounds two. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of just, you've just got to uh, see what the maxi shows you before you, you, you don't know if exactly. it's correct to maxi really until you see. Yep. But uh, 14 to 17, I imagine, yeah, I don't know. I, I imagine that was shuffle, but he did think about it for a very long time. And maybe he just figures he can go through his deck with enough velocity they can find most of those golds anyway. Uh, Syndicate managed to get this great sword developed as well. No leader charge, large charges committed, um, just meaning that he's got that obviously great sword in his graveyard for the next round. Interesting decision. Top decking the scum does still decide to hold on to the scum, which is a nice carryover play. Keeps him having this four point scum, but also gives him two extra points on that savage bear uh, for, for the future rounds. And for Shaggy, he hasn't quite managed to get ahead just yet. So Syndicate really managing to find the balance between not over committing, getting carry over, um, while also not losing on even. He's doing a really good job here. Yep, both of Shaggy's Megascopes here playing for eight, but Syndicate managed to sneak in a sneaky 10-point Megascope with this Greatsword. Has that GERD available to boost up the Greatsword that's currently in play as well, so it's not like he played a super bad card to make that work. And Shaggy here going to be playing his Scald out on the last turn before the GERD. On the front row as well, which is definitely a misposition. Oh, yeah, Scold gives him an extra target. Two extra points of tempo, because not only do you get the damage on the Scald, the Gerd also getting that extra point buff on the Greatsword. Shaggy, though, he was just looking to pass. Like, he's kind of happy seeing this Gerd. Again, we talked about this this round one really being about balancing overcommitment. I think Poison did a great... Uh, sorry, not Poison. Syndicat did a great job. But this Gerd was the first little bit of commitment, really, from him. Indeed. Both players not wanting to pull their Sunset Wanderers. It was a bit awkward for Shaggy to play another card anyway, so... Losing the point doesn't make a huge difference. Just takes his natural pass and finds a bunch of gold. I believe that means that was a maxi shuffle, as I believe both Jonad and Totem were in the bottom row yeah. previously. Doesn't find any more of his discard package. Still missing Coral, still missing Birna. Shaggy as well, not exactly having the best dry pass card. Uh, he does play uh, Hunter, for example. Great Sword could have developed his Hyalmar a little bit more. Bear Witch are far from ideal. Probably better options, but yeah, both players going to round three with Sunset Wanderers. Mm -hmm. Both players with Axie available to reset the opponent's Sunset Wanderers as well. There's a Morkvarg picked up. Both Skirmishers in hand for Syndicats. There's the Birna. Okay. Can he find the Coral too? There goes the Slash. Picks oh up the Coral. Goodness. Not bad. Not there bad. There it is. And Shaggy just not messing about, opening with the Totem. A fantastic card in the Syndicate Mirror. Any random damage can just be soaked by the Totem. Cards like Coral, the leader charges as well. So no surprises to see Syndicate mirroring the play of Shaggy there. Yep, both players leading on the Totem. Very powerful card in this Mirror. Nor against anything else, you would probably just Coral on this board, try to see what your hand looks like, but... Little disincentivized from doing so when you're just going to be transforming some of these bear abominations. Does leave Shaggy's hand pretty awkward though if he's not going for a discard play this turn. Just to touch on what each player is missing as well, because of course it's a mirror matchup that can be very relevant in this kind of round. Of course, sequencing comes into it as the as the gutting slash is found from Coral. Um, 
Syndicate missing Heat Wave, but most importantly, Heat Wave is not that great in the mirror. Missing the Quen, and that is a huge card. On the side of Shaggy, I believe it's also a Heat Wave he is missing, but has access to the Quen. Uh, there is a Skirm stuck in the deck for Shaggy, whereas uh, Syndicate does have access to all of his discard targets. Yep, I'm going to be looking for these discard cards to be fixing the hands here in round three. Shaggy's is the first Sunset Wanderer to pop out and does draw that Skirmisher. Yep, Heat Wave, kind of the last thing Shaggy uh, might like to see. But again, it really doesn't play for that many points in this matchup, particularly when you've already got Axie for the Sunset Wanderers. Yep, speaking of Axie on the Sunset Wanderers, gets taken now. These Wanderers growing really big just doesn't mean very much in this matchup. They're pretty much always going to be the best reset you're given with Axie. And I think it's going to be all eyes on the top deck for Syndicate here, with Quen still stuck in the deck. There are two Bear Witches in his deck, so it's unlikely he's going to brick his Quen. And there is the Heat Wave for Shaggy as well. Not um, bad, not bad, not bad. This card is a skirmisher. There was actually a possibility the Quen could have been bricked there, trying it with the Bear Witch at the bottom. But I guess it could have been placed at the bottom it's with the Maxi. Exactly, it's probably bottom with the Maxi. That's part of the reason why you play Maxi in these decks, is just to mm -hmm. free up those discard packages being played in round three. Almost always the card you're going to put to the bottom is the Bear Witch here. Both players just jamming the cards, no messing about. And again, Syndicat, he still does not have the Quen. But surely with Burner, Sunset Wanderers, he will find it. You've got to imagine. Yeah, he's not playing Maxi though, right? Oh so... my goodness, the double <laughs> Bear Witcher! So he can just brick it. The Quen oh. is officially bricked. Well. Well, he wasn't going to draw it anyway, so... Well, he still could with the Sunset Wanderers. <laughs> uh, that would be brutal. That would be brutal. That's not how yeah, I want other... the series to end. The other options are a Heat Wave, there's a Gutting Slash, and there's a Savage Bear. The Savage Bear, eight points. Could actually be the best uh, target. Heat Wave probably playing for a similar amount, but... Uh, uh, Junod as well. Very, very good in this mirror matchup, so... It's going to be a Bear Witcher played off Quen for Shaggy, but Junod on Syndicate can reset a Bear Witcher. Um, not reset, sorry, damage, uh, kill, just kill the damage Bear Witcher that comes off Kadooch. Also, Mentor sometimes an option in these in these matchups off of off of Kadooch. Yeah, especially with the, the Axie being reserved for the Sunset Wanderers, it becomes a lot more of a, a consideration. Where normally you're just expected to get reset unless you have last play here, because the Axie has to be used on the gigantic Sunset Wanderers. A little more of an option than it would normally be. But we are just going to see oh, Quen coming out here for Shaggy. Pulls that Bear Witcher, puts it next to the Toad. Oh, puts the Quen next to the Totem. Gives him the ability to click on that. Chooses not to, though, hoping that those Reckless Flurry pings can still hit that Bear a little bit. Yeah, also, uh, there's a potential that the random leader charges could hit the shield on the Quen. Mm -hmm. And there's the option of maybe putting the Kadok, for example, next to the Totem. Um, but here we go. The top there is the Savage Bear. It's an eight-point Savage Bear. Pretty good. Could have been a two-point Quen. Uh, it could have been a six-point Guiding Slash. The Heat Wave maybe would have been better if Shaggy does decide to go for the Mentor. But with the threat of the Heat Wave, I would imagine that Shaggy probably plays it a little bit safe. Also Very could go for the Quartermaster yeah. as well um, to, to hit down the Fnatic and transform that. Going for the Quen next to the Totem. I guess because the... If leader charges hit that, he always still has the armor that he can damage the totem. Yeah, it's an exciting finish here as the Savage Bear hits the board. Two cards remaining for each player. Uh, Syndicate has four bleeding on the board and leader charge advantage. Shaggy, it's time for the leader. Is it's... he going for the Mentor? He obviously has the read that there's a Kadok left, there's a, a, a Junod. Is he just banking on no Heat Wave here? Let's see. Looks like... Nope. Gonna take the safer line. Bear Witch here. Positions it so that if the Birna dies, he still has a unit to heal with the Kaduk. And if the Morkvarg dies, there's a good chance the Hjalmar gets damaged by the leader charges as well. Syndicat sort of got a similar dilemma. Does he bank on Shaggy not drawing the Heat Wave? Well, instead he decides to greed the Kaduk. So he's gonna go for the Mentor, sacrificing the four points of healing value so that his last card cannot be tool punish. Love it's a big it. finish for Syndicat. He's got the Mentor and three leader charges available. Will it be enough? 
think it's gonna be enough. It's a lot of points. Two more Looking times. For some more blood dust. Hits the the fanatic in the back row. The abomination Ooh, of and the Junot and the scum. It. It's all of it. Oh, the mentor. It's a big it's finish and it's a big by two points. <laughs> Syndicate's gonna take it over wow. Shaggy. Winning the Reckless Flurry Mirror. Wow. I think Syndicate played that game incredibly well. I think his round one management, uh, he had a nice hand for it, but I think he just really did a great job of just winning the round, not over committing too much, keeping Shaggy in the round for a distance, and then that last say mentor to really make that heat wave a lot worse than it otherwise would have been. Really, really cool to see. Well played. What a great series that was. Indeed, indeed. Seeing, didn't think we would be seeing devotion monsters today. Didn't think we'd be seeing soldier imperial formation today. But back to back series, we've seen some pretty interesting surprises. Looking forward to what our last series coming up next is going to have in store. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, some more exciting decks. And yeah, Shaggy, it's got got a hurt losing the the flurry mirror. But Syndicate, I have to say, I think he deserved it just for the way he played that flurry mirror. Um, really, really great. See, he missed his Quen for goodness sake, and he and he still pulled it off. So, uh, yeah, fair play. And, and often I find these flurry mirrors can be uh, certainly with the portal versions not the most exciting, but that one really, really was. There's some some very interesting plays. And it, it, if the leader charges went worse, Shaggy could have at least gotten out with a draw there. Uh, the leader charges at the end. Obviously, getting those extra points for the mentor by getting a lot of blood thirst. So it could have gone either way. Um, I think the odds were probably in Syndicate's favor, but uh, if he was a little bit unlucky, Shaggy could have at least forced a draw if, if, if it was possible for him, I think, to win as well there, if leader charges were uh, just went in his favor. Yeah, I think you're right, but uh, in the end there, those charges hitting the right targets, and that Syndicate was able to take it. I think we're... I don't know how much more is going on. Sounds like they were having some tech issues five minutes ago, but... Um, yeah, not sure how long it's going to be until the next match. I think we should probably just cut to break, and then we'll come back once we know what match we're going to be covering next. Sound good to you? Yeah, it sounds like a plan. Awesome. All good. right. See you guys in a few minutes. Be back soon.